Aston Martin and Mercedes-Benz. The race was to be unforgettable. Sadly, overshadowed by an appalling accident when one of the Mercedes-Benz cars exploded into the crowd, killing 81 spectators. Out of respect, the other Mercedes drivers withdrew. With their main rival out of the race, we can never know if Jaguar would still have won. But win they did. It was a hollow victory that year, ruined not only by the tragic accident at the race, but also by a personal tragedy for Sir William Lyons, as his only son Michael was killed in a road accident whilst driving down to cheer on his father's team. On the show, we continue our journey through the history of Jaguar and we get to meet some of the people that were involved in the creation of some of their greatest cars. So don't go away. Welcome back to this very special episode of Classic Gear as we continue our look at the history and development of Jaguar. Type is uh, the iconic Jaguar. Uh, Enzo Ferrari called it the most beautiful car that's ever been designed. It's the only car that's on display at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Uh, it defined a whole generation, along with the Beatles, Mary Quant, Carnaby Street. was the work of aerodynamicist Malcolm Sayer and was derived from the C and D type racing cars. However, Sir William Lyons insisted that there be a fixed top coupe version of the car and this was to become his favourite. In mechanical terms, the E type continued to use the three carburettor 3.8 litre XK engine with 265 horsepower, which had been originally introduced in the XK150. Similarly, it had a four-wheel disc brake system, which was by now an established Jaguar feature. This car was a revelation to the press and to the public. It became the car of its era, and it stayed in production until 1974. 
Even today, as you look at the car, it looks so thoroughly modern. Uh, what a great looking car with a great long bonnet, uh, short rear deck. It influenced so many cars. It was sexy, it was stylish, it was sophisticated. It was really a car that in many ways came to define the sports car. But what was interesting to the public eye, not seeing the relationship to the race cars, a lot of people wouldn't even be aware of them. This thing almost landed from us to space from nowhere. And it was just amazing. And it took the world by storm in 1961. And it really was the most beautiful car that had ever been built in terms of proportion and form because of its purity and because of its absolute simplicity and its intent. Part of the magic of the E-Type is that it recalls the C-Type and D-Type in its, in its structure and its form. And because of that, uh, I really do believe has a, has, a, has a magic, has, has a quality that few other cars can ride. Well, this isn't the first time I've driven an E-Type Jag. Um, track it feels like a much nicer experience because they're not great going around corners it's quite a nice environment to be in ahead of you and obviously a big open boot behind me inside you can really see how the interior has, has come on over the years because it's it's all terribly 70s in here actually it's sort of metal dash everything edged in black there's no wood to speak of apart from the steering wheel um it's a it's a completely different generation of As there were over 75,000 E-types made and distributed across the world, there's never really been a market for reproductions. A decent model will cost you 15 to 25,000 pounds, but at the other end of the scale, a real early mint version of a car might cost you 50,000 quid.